Good morning. Welcome to my Maker Monday series. Today I'm going to tell you all about how I got started in belt making. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Jan Hibbard and my business is Log Cabin Leather by Jan and I got started way back in 1977. So today I'm going to again share the stories of how I got started with belt making. Belts are my signature line. They've always been my best selling products for the last 43 years. So I'm going to start at the beginning how I got started with a, with a lot of work to begin with and then belt making in particular. Um, it all started back in 1977 when I was a college student in Boston and I purchased this book. Um, again, I was studying to be a teacher. I lived downtown with my sister. We had an apartment. I used to take my bicycle to work. So we took the subway to Barnes and Nobles when it opened in downtown Boston. I always went to the craft section. I bought this book for two bucks and it mentioned several other companies in the back of it that were in South Station, Boston. That was really, all, it was, you know, almost walking distance, um, just now the subway stop away from downtown Boston or not far in any of them. So I purchased that book. Um, the next day I took the subway to South Station and I went to Siegel Leather Company, which is one of the companies in this book. And I bought, my, I knew how to sew from home making in school. That's the only, I'm self-taught completely. So everything I know about leather is, um, I'm self-taught. And again, the name of my, I'm Jan Hebert, and the name of my business is Log Cabin Leather, and we are here in the basement of my log cabin home, which is where I make all my products. Back then, it was not the case, because I was in college. Um, so we, um, I bought the book, or went to the leather company, the Siegel Company. It was Jeff Siegel. He was the owner of the company. He actually sold me my first hide of leather, my first leather mallet, which I don't have anymore, a pair of scissors, the tools, for sewing leather. Um, this was going to be hand sewn, so needle and thread, um, but also for leather you have to punch the holes in before you sew it. It's different than cloth, it's much heavier. You punch the holes first, you glue it. So glue the tools for punching the holes. That's a whole different aspect of leather work. Um, and so that will be a story for another day. Um, right now, again, I'm really going to talk about um, belt making. So the other company that was on that street was called Berman Leather. And I went there and later, you know, after a bit, they really became my supplier for belt leather. And a lot of my leathers to start with right then. Um, um, right now I'm going to tell you about the different types of leather because there are so many, many different types of leather and they all have different purposes. So if you followed any of my stuff on Facebook, um, I have a, something going on on Tuesdays called Tool Trivia where I had a, I have a different tool posted. Um, this was a tool I had last week. So I'm going to show you what that is today. This is a tool I will have tomorrow. And again, this is what's called a thickness gauge. Leather is very different when you purchase it than like cloth or something like that. It is sold in pieces, but the pieces you cannot necessarily select the size. They're pre-selected, they're cut into different sizes, and they're sold in different pieces. So leather, how you buy different size pieces. Um, this being the whole hide, this being almost the whole hide, it's called the double back. This this being half of a, a well, this is the half piece um, here. This is called the shoulder. This is called the bend. This is the belly, which I don't see what anybody would really want that for. And it comes in all different thicknesses. I don't know if you can see this little picture, but it's sold in thicknesses. So this is to tell how thick, if you had a hide and you weren't sure how thick it is, you put it into this and it, it has little measurements on it and how far the leather goes into it determines how thick it is. So this is four or five ounce leather, which is exactly what it says. And a lot of times it will say on the back when you buy it. And what's different about leather, again, they're hides. So all animals are different. Every hide is going to be a different size. Um, so you're not going to know. Hi, Evan. How are you? Um, so you're not going to know what size. You know, it's going to vary. You can't say I want X size. It varies. Um, so it's so pounds. Um, a lot of my jewelry, for example, is made out of a much thinner leather. But it's still in. The other thing I'm going to tell about is how it's the different types of leather. What I'm showing you now is called vegetable tanned leather. And again, this would be the belt leather, very thick. 
dimensionally. So again, on the gauge, again, nine, 10 ounce leather. So that's what my belts are made out of. I hope your belts worked out well for you, Evan. Um, hope, you, hope you like them. So there's the different types of leather. Now, the other thing is also the tannage. There's two different main types of tannage. There's vegetable tanned and there's chrome tanned. Vegetable tanned is what all my belts are made out of. Um, it usually is natural in color like this. It's tanned with natu natural uh, plant products. So mostly from oak trees. The tannin in acorns and oak bark is very potent. And that's what it, that's been used by Indians even way back in time. Um, still used today. A lot of leather used to come from Texas and the oak trees in Texas are called live oak trees. Instead of we have black oak and white oak and red oak around here, um, they have live oak. So a lot of the leather used to be, is called live oak when you purchase it. Uh, so again, so that's carving leather. Anything that has designs on it has to be vegetable tanned. It has to be able to absorb water. It's mold, you can mold it, you can, it's pliable. Um, you can do amazing things with it. Um, the vest, on the other hand, is made out of comb tanned leather. The advantage of this is so that it's more water repellent. It's, you know, that makes it a little more durable that way. So, again, different for, uh, purposes, upholstery leather, clothing leather, things like that are made out of the chrome tan leather. When I do my books and things like that, again, the carving is on the oak tan leather because it has to be. This, the chrome tan leather will not accept the water. It's more waterproof. Um, a lot of times it's treated with oils to make it softer and really buttery feeling. But, you know, it's not carvable. So that's why my covers always had two pieces of leather because the chrome tan leather is going to hold up. Again, this book was made in 1978, so this is now going on, you know, 42 years old. Um, <laughs> it will hold up. So, again, you have the thickness, you have the tannage. Um, so those are both things about um, how they're cut. So now I, I was back to the story of how um, purchasing my leather in, in Boston. So Siegel was the company that got me going on the vest. Um, Berman was the company I started going to to buy the belt leather. Now, way back then, again, I did purchase the double shoulders. Everything I purchased back then was the natural colored oak tan leather. All the belts I made originally, I hand dyed, whether they were plain belts or whether they were, you know, some of my beautiful hand tools belts, which is something I'll talk about next week um, on how I do the stamping process. Um, my father was my inspiration, really, for my belts. Um, he actually retired the year I started college. He was an um, editor and the publisher for Northeastern University. But, you know, computers started coming into play, and he didn't know anything about computers um, and that kind of thing. And so he kind of lost his job because he was, you know, a guy, he was older by that time. He was couldn't keep up with the technology and stuff, so he kind of was phased out. Um, he was bored. <laughs> he loved my he loved my leather stuff, and most of my products, again, if you've listened to me before, um, were created from my parents. As most people, when you start, you make products to give to the people you know. So started out with my family. He loved my belts. Now he really did not like the plain belts. Um, so more about him will be coming next week because he was the one who liked my tooled belts. What I'm wearing now is a belt that was my father's. This was probably made in 1978. Um, he's gone now. I still wear the belt. I did not cut it because it is the one that was for him. But um, I do custom fit them when you buy them. So it wouldn't be that long when you purchase it. But in any event, so now what happened with the leather? I was buying it from Berman Leather and... Um, a woman named Janet waited on me for many, many years that worked there. And then she moved up to New Hampshire, actually, to another company where I got a lot of my beautiful, like, pigskin and beautiful colored leathers. Um, I went out for lunch with her a couple times We and things like that. I bought some leather from her company. And then that a lot of companies closed a few years after that. The leather market changed significantly and, you know, purchasing leather changed a lot. Um, computers made a big difference because, again, up until this point, I bought all my leather in person, and that was getting harder to do. Um, Janet moved from the Berman Company. It moved to another location. Then it was a Rob 
that worked there for many, many years. And I didn't even realize this for a long time, which I'll tell you something about that later. Um, I always would go in there and I always had a book like this and it had my supplies listed in it. Anything I needed, I would have the um, stock number written down, things like that, what page it was from the catalog, the price. I'd have all that written in here. And Rob always told me he loved that because when I went into the store, he would take this and go back and pick out all my small supplies. And then as far as the belt leather, he would just have me go out back and pick the hides off right off the pallet because he knew I was going to buy a couple of them. And he, and again, what's different about leather, which I didn't mention before, these are animal hides. Every single hide is different. Again, you buy them in pieces, but every animal is a different size, just like people. We're all different sizes. They, have, they all have a brand in them. So that's a problem when you buy the bigger pieces. They're going to have a brand mark in them, usually on the animal's butt. That's how a cow is branded. That shows on most leathers. Um, they get scratches from barbed wire fences and things. That shows on the leather. So no hide is going to be the same. No hide is going to be perfect. The hides, again, but when I now I buy these double backs because, again, there's really very little waste on it. Here, of course, you know, again, you can't cut a belt out of that. It's wasted rubbery at the ends. Those I get the biggest count of. I can make belts for very large people up to a 60-inch waist, which I do have customers um, that buy that. Because, again, the belts are the 9, 10-ounce leather, so, so thick leather. They're one solid piece. That's what makes them different than a lot of other leather belts you buy in the store. My sister had a name brand belt. It was made. It said solid leather, or it said leather. The leather was thinner than this piece of pigskin. And this, this is so thin, and that gauge... It's too small, thin to even gauge it. It's th that's the thinnest leather I know that you can buy, that I can buy. Her belt was even, it was thinner than that. It was thinner than a piece of paper. Um, and then had cardboard and then had the vinyl, you know, sold us a leather belt. Mine are solid leather. Um, so you don't have that issue. Um, and then, but what happened is, again, all the companies where I could buy it in person now were gone. Berman Leather moved into another location. And... This I didn't realize until then that the Rob that I had always dealt with at the store was actually Rob Berman. He was the owner of the company, had, had been waiting on me for like 20 years. Um, but when they moved to this new lake location, he started being, again, really, or maybe, uh, you know, he took over really the total management of the place. And so he just worked out back and was no longer out front. You know, the business had grown or whatever. And so none of the people knew what I didn't get the customer service I was used to. They would just bring me hides of leather. And again, sometimes they would just bring the first crappy thing that was on the shelf. And they vary greatly. And that's where the hardship is today because there are no leather companies around, really, that I can buy leather in person. There is still Tandy Leather. Tandy Leather, I'll talk about. They're worldwide. Um, I'll talk more about them next week because they're really where all my tools, all my books... Again, I'm self-taught, so most of what I taught myself was from things I bought from them. Um, now, this one in Chelmsford, Mass, so that's about an hour away from here. That's the closest I can go. But they've really changed the types of leather they have, and they're expensive. Um, because I'm a business, I you know think at wholesale prices. So now, you know, and finding sources of leather took me a long time. Because, again, you're buying sight unseen. I remember I make a beautiful hobby horse for a baby. Um, Becky has one for her. My daughter has one for her baby. Um, and I was trying to make a bubblegum pink one. It was actually for, I think, a baby gift for a friend of her, my daughter's. Um, ordered it. And when it came, it was like almost gray. Look, suede fades in the sun. It had sat out. Part of it had been exposed. Part of it had not. So it was different. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was like gray. It was not a pretty cute pink for a baby. You know, I didn't want this color pink, but it was a, you know, lighter, softer baby pink. And well, it was supposed to be more like a bubblegum pink, but it wasn't anything like that. So it's very difficult. So it took me quite a few years to find sources of leather. Now I finally have found a source, which is um, Weaver Leather, which is in Ohio. And... Um, it's actually the leather is tanned by the Amish, and I absolutely am in love with their vegetable tan leather, their belt leathers in general. Um, I do buy the double backs, the big pieces, so they're very difficult for me to work with. I'm going to work, uh, so cutting a hide 
on Wednesday and, and cutting belts and things like that. Um, I don't think I have a full hide right now, but they're so big I can only unroll. They're over six feet long and they're over, over seven feet or six feet wide, seven feet long. So they're huge. Um, so you can't even fit them in the room. But what this leather is absolutely amazing now, and I love it. It is so smooth. Now, this is the front of the leather. This is the side you would put the design on. But this is the back of the leather. And it is absolutely smooth and beautiful, and I love it. And that is not the case of all leathers. Um, let me get a sample here. That, again, the backs of some leather, again, well, you can see this one is kind of rougher in here. But some of it, the belt leather, too, that I see a bit was very was very very rough that's belt this is belt leather and see how rough the back of it is and especially dyeing it by hand i would dye the backs of the belts too that didn't you know that was harder to get the color uniform and stuff without putting it on really heavy these are so nice and nice and smooth it's absolutely amazing it's almost hard to tell which is which side is which especially with the pre-colored belts which is pre-dyed belts so now for my belts, because I make so many of them, and again, dyeing is something I'm going to talk about in two weeks from now, the coloring process, how I add the colors to the belts, things like that. Again, the tooling of the designs next week, adding the colors and things to the belt will be the following week. Um, I was dyeing all my belts, even the solid color belts, by hand. That's very difficult because, again, this is an animal skin. It doesn't come out even, you know dye if you've ever worked with dye in one space and not enough in another it comes out darker in one space it was very hard to get the dye uniform and also again if the leather has any scars in it at all that's going to show up more or at least in the types of dye i used which were called antique dyes it showed up more if you have a design stamped on it again a lot of times you can you know it doesn't show up so much in that but it, it it's very difficult because you work, especially if you uh, spend all this time on a tooled belt and then you dye it and it comes out like crap. And that still happens when I'm, I'm doing, you know, book covers and things like that is I go to dye the piece and it comes out horrible. Now, if I'm painting a scene, I don't, you know, you know, dye it first. Again, that's a whole different day. But now I do buy these pre-dyed belt leathers from the same company, the Weaver Leather in Ohio, and they come in. This is called Weaver Leather, and it comes in like five different colors. So I buy that all pre-dyed. And again, the back of it is absolutely beautiful. So I love it. The, now, these are fairly stiff, and not everybody likes a real stiff felt. So the other leather I use is called Bridal Leather. It's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more pliable than this. This is a little bit stiffer. Um, again, the dye, it, it, the color doesn't go through the 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 hide is what, as much as it does um, on that leather. And this is still the vegetable tanned. It's vegetable tanned and then dyed. Um, this leather um, is still vegetable dyed, but it's, it's, it has more oils in it, which makes it a little bit softer. Um, so that comes in to several colors. But again, I'm limited to the colors I can get. <clears throat> and again, it's an individual dye. So every hide, and again, the other thing is different sides have a different pigment to them. I don't know if that really should. But again, they're different colors. It's skin. They're different shades. Different, you know, again, these are bleached and stuff, but they come out differently because each animal's skin is different. So that's going to affect how it dies. So again, that's the reason I buy them pre-dyed now because now I do get the uniformity from the dye. And that's um, pretty much... What I have to say today, if you want to keep informed on really what I'm doing and what topics I'm going to be discussing each week, you might want to get on my email list um, right at the t header in my Facebook page. It should say join now. You can click that to join my email or also just click anywhere on the header and it will take you to a page where you can join my email. On Monday, I have my newsletter come, that comes out um, that highlights all these activities I'm doing each week. So it will tell you everything that's going on. Monday is called Makers Monday, where I'm going to tell the stories of behind my products. So this month actually is all about belt making. Um, so this week it's again, cutting the belts. Next week it's about putting the designs in the belt. It's the week after that. It's a, and this is for all aspects of, of these topics for the week. Um, 
the week after that is about adding the color to the belts and the weeks after that is the finishing touches and and the other steps that i put into my belts that a lot of other belt makers don't that make them a little bit better um on tuesday i have the game called tool trivia where i post a tool this was the tool last week and again you were supposed to guess what it was used for so i hope people will play along like that please leave a comment not just you know liking and and, and things like that help but leaving comments help it grow more so that was the get one to guess next uh last week this week and then um all right i'll get to that in a minute and then this is my one that's going to be posted tomorrow um so if you've been listening to me today that might be a clue on what that's all about and again i'll post that tomorrow my it's called tool trivia tuesday and i post a tool and the idea is you're supposed to guess what the tool is what it's called what it's used for and then later i'll i'll give a little bit of an answer to that um, if you want to find out more details on the answer then you'll need to look at my blog which will come out on thursday but on wednesday i have my workshop wednesday series and that will be again another live presentation here where i'm going to go through cutting belts exactly the whole the whole process all my belts are hand cut it is not done by a machine some people have a machine that they run them through i do not everything i do is done by hand my only two machines are a sewing machine now and the skyver which is something i use primarily for belts and that will be in the last week <laughs> on the belt making this, this month um on so again workshop wednesday that again behind the scenes in my workshop actually making the pride different projects um again same themes as i mentioned uh, for the maker monday it all follows the same theme for the week um so again this week i'm cutting the belts uh the thursday the blog will come out and so it will have some of these videos playing again that if you didn't see them live or you know things like that you can watch them then you can you know comment and things like that i think if you want to i'm going to try to put replays here on facebook i'm not pretty sure right now how to do that because uh, i'm not really tech savvy um so that will come out on thursday friday i have flashback friday where, where i'm going to show you some of these old original projects that i still have hanging around that have been around for over 40 years um or somewhere about that um so that will be all what i show on flashback friday just so my older projects and how you know a little bit about them and on saturday i have my spotlight saturday series where i'm actually going to show you some of the belts i'm making today and that kind of thing so this week again i'm going to focus on the plain belts and what makes mine a little bit different than the other belts out on the market and things like that so that will be the spotlight saturday series so that basically highlights the week again one more time newsletter monday make maker monday um on monday tool trivia tuesday workshop wednesday the blog on thursday flashback friday and spotlight saturday so those are my activities for the week i hope you join me um again the monday the wednesday and the saturday will be live the other things would just be posts on facebook um, please join me on Facebook. Um, you know, again, leave comments because that really helps me more so than um, it improves my reach more so than just a like does. Um, so please consider that. Um, again, sign up for my email if you really want to know what's going on. You also, if you're on my email list, you get more about my sales. I will have a sale coming out this month. Um, most of my sales are opened up to my email list. Not for the general public i mean christmas and the holidays yes i have sales that are open to the general public but if i do something like that it's always open to the um, email subscribers first they get in a day earlier than everybody else um, find out about when it's starting and things like that before i announce it to the general public so that's the best way to uh, stay informed on, on what i'm doing um any questions or anything you can always you know leave comments please feel free to do that i'd love if you'd share this video with others i mean i know they're probably boring <laughs> um, i'm working on it guys i'm trying to make them more interesting so i hope you'll bear with me and i appreciate anybody who has been following me and thank you for all to all of you who are with me um thank you very much i think that's pretty much all i have to say for right now um so thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this series if you did please Please let me know. Otherwise, I'll talk to you hopefully on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Bye for now.